Hey guys, ESO here, and in today's The Outer World Guide, I'll be showing you another six unique weapon and armor locations in the Outer Worlds game. Now, we've already covered all the secret weapon locations in the Emerald Vale, and you can find those guides linked in the playlist below. But in today's video, we're covering all six unique weapons located here at the Groundbreaker, which is the next location you'll be visiting in the Outer Worlds walkthrough. And if you guys enjoy guides like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for YouTube to let you know each time I release a new daily Outer Worlds guide here on the channel. So let's start out with unique weapon number one. As soon as you enter the Groundbreaker, you will be just here on the map where the main area of the building is. Head down the stairs, go straight to the left, and there you're going to find a merchant who sells us a unique weapon. So as I said, downstairs, and then we're going to go left to the rest and go, and through this door just here. Now the merchant we're looking for is located just here. Her name is Gladdy, and you've probably already met her because she's part of the main quest line. I do recommend, however, buying the weapon she has because it's pretty damn good, especially at the start of the game. Bless my now this is actually the best handgun in the entire game for corrosive damage that you can buy. It's a level 10 weapon that it starts out at, delivering 480 damage per second base. But the best thing about it being corrosive damage is that it actually is super effective against enemy armor. Which as you can imagine, pretty much every single enemy apart from most of the bugs in the game are going to be wearing armor. Specifically automatrons, the robots that you're going to come across quite a lot so having that corrosive damage in your pocket is going to be huge it also has a massive magazine size of 18 and a damage of 32 times 6 per shot which i believe in total is 192 damage if all of those projectiles hit now obviously it does cost 4387 bits to buy it however if you want to buy the Mag 2 Melt modification that it already has installed separately, it will actually cost you 4,000 bits anyway. So you might as well buy this and then upgrade it because you'll save yourself money unless you're not using a handgun build anyway. So let's go ahead and purchase this and take a look. And just so you know, the reason it's 32 times 6 is so that when you fire it, it actually fires out a burst effect. So obviously the closer you are, the more damage you're going to do and the more accurate it's going to be. Because if you have a look at the spread, it is quite tight. But if I fire it at a wall over there, it's, you know, that recoil is pretty hard. If you push down while aiming, you get a much smaller spread. But um, it's, it's quite difficult to do. So basically, close range handgun, this is super effective. Especially if you're using tactical time dilation like this you can get a really accurate spread as you can see and it's just going to absolutely label anyone wearing armor or with a headshot even on very hard difficulty you're going to have no problem taking absolutely everyone out i mean look it's just stupidly powerful <laughs> it's so satisfying to use as well the one thing however with this weapon that is a drawback is the condition which is going to reduce quite quickly because it fires so quickly Every time you fire, it's going to release a smattering of bullets. Each one of those bullets will reduce its condition slightly. So do be prepared to repair this weapon. And now, guys, we're going to cover our second unique item in this video, and it's a piece of armor. So after we're done at Gladys, we're going to exit, and we're going to run all the way back outside to the main pavilion area. Just here on the left, you're going to find Space's Choice. Now, this is more of a funny reference, but there are some secrets here and a unique secret I want to share with you guys. But right here, you're going to find my favorite NPC in the entire game, Martin. Now, if you have a chat with Martin, I'm not going to spoil this for you. You can ask him about his work for Space's Choice and you will slowly descend a spiral into the depression that is Martin's life. Um, but I'll let you discover that for yourself. We just want to trade yeah, with him. Because the first thing Martin actually sells us is just here. It's the Moonman helmet. Uh, and if you have a look at the Moonman helmet, you asked for it, you got it. A genuine Spacer's Choice Moonman helmet based off the most popular mascot in SC's marketing history. Enjoy. 
Now, as you can see, this gives you a plus five bonus to lie because obviously Spacer's Choice has a lot of lies attached to it. But what we want to do to find this little kind of secret Easter egg, uh, which kind of explains Martin's depression, is sneak behind him. If you have a sneak skill of 40, you'll actually be able to pickpocket him. So you want to save the game and just go into sneak mode, make sure no one's watching you, quickly pickpocket him and take his uh, weapon as well. I think it's pretty random what he's holding. But as you can see, he's also holding a copy of the Moomin Helmet costume accessory as well, which gives him plus five lying skill. Um, if we come down here to the storage room, you'll be able to lockpick this with a skill of 25. So I'm going to go ahead and open this and close the door behind me, and we give have access to his storage room and um, this is going to have a bunch of random stuff in but it does have the unique defective moon man helmet and if you have a look it's a unique version of the moon man helmet the spacer's choice version it has one less armor and it also gives you a temperament skill bonus of plus one even though it says defective the joke here is that it says that there are no problems with this helmet <laughs> which is a classic Spacer's Choice design, of course. So make sure you equip that and <laughs> look how ridiculous you look. My goodness. But as for our third secret, if you look just down here, under the floor just here, you'll find a steel rest and go key card. So if you actually steal that and then we run all the way back to the rest and go area we just left earlier, what you'll find on the right here is a storage room. And you might want to shut the door behind you before doing this, but this storage room has three safes inside it. Pavati, stop opening the door. Inside these safes, you're going to find a lot of high-level weaponry very early on the game you otherwise wouldn't have found. So it's going to be random for you, for you but um, there's a lot of awesome stuff like the collectible tossable cards that you can use later as well. And then the next safe just over here has a bolter pistol, 122 corrosion damage, loads of unique weapon mods. And then the last safe just here has a tactical shotgun for me. But it really depends what you get. You can save the game before actually opening them. I just wanted to show you that cool secret. And then if you come upstairs as well, you will then be able to access this room here. Though there isn't really a lot of stuff inside there anyway. So I wouldn't be too excited. But um, there's a few uh, consumables you can obviously loot, but that is really it. Now we have the fourth unique weapon in this video, which is actually the best melee weapon in the entire game for a two-handed character. So from the ship holding bay just here, located here on the map, we're going to turn around and we're going to go through the customs control just here. Then we're going to go left over here and you'll see a door just there. We're going to head through this door and I'll show you on the map in a second. And this is basically the uh, bedroom area. But if you jump up here, you can actually access a secret room. Um, if we crouch through this air vent, you're going to find about a bunch of outlaws in this next area. So firstly, let's take out this scrap mechanical with our pistol and take out this guy. Because obviously like, we're extremely overpowered now. Pavati, watch out. They're going to kill you, Pavati. Nice work, Pavati. We destroyed them with this extremely overpowered pistol I showed you how to get earlier in the video. I love it. Now, on one of the corpses of these guys, we're going to find a key card. Here they go, the repair hanger key card. We need to pick that up. It's the only thing we actually need to unlock this door. Unlock with repair hammer key card. There we go. Inside here, we're going to find the unique prasmatic hammer. Just here in the safe. The Prasmatic Hammer. Let's take a look at this weapon. It's a science weapon. So if I show you guys this, it's insanely powerful. It only has a damage per second of 76, but we're, bear with me because we can increase that even further. So if you hold down the power attack on this weapon, boom! It's a massive area of effect ability that just wrecks things. And this weapon actually scales of your strength and your two-handed skill. And also your science ability as well. So if you have the perk here, which increases your science weapon damage by 50%, and then you also have the perk over here that increases it by another 50%, you're going to be doing 100% more damage with this weapon 
and also plus your strength skill and your two-handed skill makes this weapon just literally broken. In fact, in fact, let's take a look. I didn't even hit them and they're already dead. It's insanely powerful, as you guys can see. Get wrecked, sir. So as you guys can see, if I line them up and then knock them down, it does 300 damage a hit for me, though my strength is actually super low. So that's pretty damn high considering. Get wrecked, sir. It's just disgustingly good. In fact, this weapon was so disgustingly good on consoles that they actually had to nerf it because there was a bug where it was doing like 60,000 damage a hit. So um, as you can imagine, that's pretty broken. So there you have it, guys, the Prasmatic Hammer. I also like the backstory of this weapon as well, though. So to grab our fourth unique weapon in the Outer Worlds, you're going to have to come from the Ground Breaker Docking Bay all the way to the other side to the engineering section of the ship. Just here, there's a giant sign. You can't miss it. Once you arrive, just come over here and chat to Julie. Speak your mind. She's going to give you a quest if you have the dialogue option just here. It seems kind of warm in here. What's going on? Groundbreakers She's then going to give us a quest. Happiness is a warm spaceship, uh, which requires us to go downstairs and sort something out for her. Once you have the quest, which you might as well grab while you're doing this, run back outside and head down this elevator here to the back bays. Once you come inside, you're going to meet your new friend, Captain McReed. Back away now, or you'll parley with the king. Let's have a chat. Look at this ripe piece of meat just sizzling on the grill. Now, it is possible to either kill Captain McCreed, or we can use our persuade or intimidate skill. Put that down before you incinerate the entire deck. I know this ain't a toy, neighbor. I'm just passing through. Can I go? Passing through? There we go. So we've managed to talk our way out of that situation, which is very useful because... There are two ways to grab this unique weapon of Captain McRed, who's currently got it on his person. One way is to obviously kill him. The second way is to pickpocket him. So obviously to do that, we need to wait until no one else is looking at us. What system alert? So as you can see, we kind of got away with that with our very high sneak skill. And we have pickpocketed from him the Montag. So as you guys can see, the Montag is a heavy weapon which does plasma damage. Now, if you didn't know, plasma damage is super effective against non-armored enemies. So anything that doesn't have arm resistance, specifically very good against any creatures. And the description reads, finally, a lock-on flamethrower, and it burns at almost 506 degrees Kelvin. So let's see if Captain McCred likes his own medicine. Get wrecked, son. Oh my god. This weapon is so fun. Get wrecked, sir. A lock on flamethrower indeed. There's even a scrap mechanical here, but no one's even managed to get in there in time. Jesus Christ. Now, you might be wondering why I'm doing so much damage. We are actually playing on very hard difficulty. Let me just show you guys. Gameplay hard mode. So, it is doing a lot of damage, but my character is set up for heavy weapons and does the maximum amount of damage with plasma weapons. So these guys that have pretty much no armor on are going to just get decimated by it. So that is a demonstration of the modern tag in action. But to be honest, it's definitely not the best plasma flamethrower type weapon you're going to come across in the game, though the stun effect is pretty helpful when it does come into play. Check this out. I mean, it just decimates everything extremely quickly so i recommend giving it to your follower for now unless you want to use it yourself but personally i don't think it's like the best weapon in the game yet but now to get the final piece of unique armor we need to finish off happiness is a warmed spaceship quest line now at this location by grabbing ourselves the radiator parts just here and then we can head back up the elevator to julie here we are, here is Julie, and now we can give her the parts for the radiator. Julie's then going to send us to the back of this room so we can continue down and turn on the power for her. Let's take this lift downstairs. Work your way over until you reach the terminal, and then we're gonna to need to cycle the droplet pumps, and then we can return back to Julie and finish the mission. And Julie's going to reward you with the welder's goggles just here. So let's take a look at the Welder's Goggles. Here they are. 
as you can see, you look like a badass now. Now, these goggles are a unique version of the standard goggles that gives you plus five sneak. However, the welder's goggles, the unique version, give you plus 15 engineering, but minus one perception because they obstruct your vision, but are great for building things. So they're pretty useful just to carry around with you for most of the game, considering they weigh literally nothing and give you plus 15 engineering. So whenever there's a speech option or something you need to do which requires engineering, you can just whack these on for that quick boost to your character. But anyway, guys, I hope you found this Outer Worlds unique weapon and armor video helpful. And if you did, please give it a like because that really does help support the channel. And you can check out the playlist down below for build guides explaining how to get the maximum damage out of every single weapon in this video depending on what kind of character build you're going through we go through all the perks stats and starting attributes you can get as well in those videos and if you want to find all these other legendary weapons as you go along in the game make sure you subscribe and press that bell icon or you can just check out the playlist link down below in the description for every single weapon location right now but guys, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.